This is MCO 455 week 10, and as we can see here, we have no chapter quiz this week. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover the specifics of Lab 6 and Lab 7, including the hardware that is needed. In Lab 6, we can see that we have to connect our four-digit display to D2 on the Grove Shield. On page 58 of our textbook, we can see the layout of our Grove Shield here we can see that this is where we're going to be connecting up our four digit display. So far we've hooked up to A0, our temperature sensor, to A1, we've hooked up our pot, and for any one of these I squared C connectors here, we've plugged in our LCD, and uh, we've also stripped off the VCC, which is the red wire, and connected it up to pin five here. So what we're gonna do right now, as I said, is connect up 2D2, our four digit display. The Grove four digit display comes with a number of public member functions. Digit display allows us to specify the pin or pins that it's connected to, and we'll see that this is not only D2, but D3. On and off are fairly obvious. Set brightness allows us to change the brightness of our display by putting in a number from zero to seven, where seven is the brightest. We have set colon because we have a colon in the middle of the display, and we can either turn it on by set colon one or set colon zero to shut it off. We can write four digit decimal numbers using the write function. And we can use write raw here to actually put patterns up on our four digit display. In lab six in the procedure, we can click here to actually see the code. And you can see here that when we do digit display and we could call it anything we like, we have to specify both D2 and D3 because both the yellow and the white wires on our cable are sending information to our four digit display. We've declared this to be segment, which is really referring to pin D2 and D3. And we set colon to zero after we've cleared our display. So that means our colon is off. We set brightness to four, which is about a medium brightness. We've set up a counter here where we're counting from 999 to greater than zero and subtracting one. We're using segment.write to actually write those numbers from 9999 down to zero and treating zero as a special case because if you said greater than or equal to zero, then it would be an infinite loop. Once we do that, we're waiting for one complete second here, and then we're segment.write raw, so we're gonna put a pattern, 6D is the pattern for S, 78 is T, 3F is O, and 73 is P. And then what we're doing here is we're setting up a loop here where we're actually using write raw now to go and look at the message array that we've got up here. And if we look up here, this is going to print out four blanks, then it's going to print out three blanks and part of this message where it's C-O-V-I-D. So the upshot of this is it's going to say stop COVID and that's what it's going to do continuously here. The last part of lab six deals with our passive infrared motion detector. Let's click here to take a look at the code. So let's take a look and see what's in our code here. First of all, our backlight LCD is set up here as flash, which is pins D14 and D15, which is any of those I squared C connectors of the four that we have. We've got interrupt in with passive infrared. Passive infrared is going to be connected to D6 on our Grove shield. And we're using that to set up an interrupt because as soon as the voltage changes on the passive infrared motion detector, that means it's detected motion, we should do something. And we're using this global variable here, motion detected, and we set it to zero. An insider interrupt service routine, when it's called up here, it's going to change motion detected from the default of zero to one to indicate motion has been detected. Now, the way to set this up is we're going to say PIR because that is the pin we're using for our infrared motion detector. And it's going to then specify the address of this code. And that's the only way it's going to know where to go when the voltage changes on the passive infrared. Now, as we showed earlier, flash is actually dealing with our LCD, so we're clearing our LCD and we're setting RGB 0000FF. And this is a typo because it says set it to white. But if you remember, this is red, green, and blue. So it's going to be actually blue to start when you first start up. And then inside the loop, it's not going to ever go back to blue again. But notice we've got flash.clear here, which is going to clear our 
LCD, and then it's going to set it to FFFFFF, which means it's going to be white when we turn on all of the colors, red, green, and blue, just like we did with our LED. Now it says if motion is detected. Now it's only going to detect motion if the passive infrared has been triggered and it's executed this code, then it's going to change this to one. So there's nothing in this code in our main line that's going to change motion detected. So it has to go up here when it triggers from the passive infrared motion detector. So when it does, it's going to say, okay, right away, let's set motion detected back to zero and then set this to FF0000, which means it's going to be red. It's going to wait a half a second, then it's going to go back and wait again for the next time motion has been detected. So every time motion has been detected, it's going to turn red. When motion has been detected, it's going to go back here and reset it back to white. Lab 7 deals with Bluetooth low energy, and we're using the Adafruit Bluefruit UART Friend to actually provide connection between your cell phone, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, to the microcontroller and running two different apps. One is called the Color Picker app and the other one is the Control Pad app, as we'll see. Now the details are given on page 74, but we're gonna do it a little differently than is shown on page 74. Now on page 74, this is the most awkward way you can possibly make connections to your Bluefruit UART friend. It shows both sides here, and this is not the way to do it. If you do it this way, even though it shows you where the connections are here, first thing you have to do is wrap the braided wire very tightly and put it in here, but you're gonna have problems because if you don't solder it properly, one of these little vias here will pop off, and then it's not gonna work, and you're gonna have to order another one and pay shipping and handling on top. What came with your kit was there's your Bluefruit UART friend, but it also comes with a little SIP header, which has got eight pins. And so what you're gonna do is you take these shorter pins here and put them along here as shown here with the longer pins set up. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it over and if you've got a piece of styrofoam, you can push it into this piece of styrofoam to hold it solid as you solder along the bottom here. And uh, if you don't, you might have one of those sponges. I think there's sort of a yellow sponge that came with your soldering thing. You can push it into that, but whatever way you do it, make sure that you solder all of the bottom pins under here that are underneath. Once that's done, then what you can do is cut the cable that you've got here, one of those extra buckle cables, and then connect those connections to the top here. For instance, your ground wire here, you would actually make sure again that you twist that very tightly and then connect it to the ground pin that's here and solder it there. And so you make all the connections along the top here. Don't forget to solder the ground to the CTS here. And the other thing is make sure that this switch is pushed to the left. And that's the easiest way to make it work. And then once you've done that, what you have to do afterwards is to plug the other end of this cable into the UART connection on your Grove Shield. Once you do that, everything should work. Now, when you first plug it in and you get power, you're going to see a red light come on indicating that there's power. And then when you run your Bluefruit UART Friend software for either the iPhone or the Android, you should see the blue light flashing when you've actually made connection. 